Introducing the Antoinette shirt, a vintage-inspired name for a vintage-inspired shirt. I thought let's find a name that could be a statement for something both old but stylish and so Antoinette because of Marie Antoinette, you know, off topic, but it's funny how many relatively young American celebrities bear names which for the French are grandma's names. For instance, Michelle, so old, or Nicole. Let's have a look. See, a huge trend in 1946 for Michelle's and for Nicole's. Wowzers, 1947 was their year. How many Nicole's and Michelle grew up being besties? Okay, the shirt pattern comes with three variants of colors and three different sleeves. I'm showing them to you quickly here without details. I'm making other sewing tutorials for these other versions. And here I'm going to show you how to sew the high color and the long sleeve versions. As you can see, loads of ruffles. If you don't like ruffles, it's a bit sad. I doubt that you and Antoinette are going to be bested. For the fabric, you'll need some cotton. Traditionally, a good shirt is made of poplin. However, you could use a synthetic fabric. It will make ironing the ruffles much easier. On the screen, I am wearing a 34, but I think I should have gone with a 36 because I've got shoulders and it's pulling a bit. All right, let us begin. I'm going to show you first the pieces of the pattern cut. So you've got the front here with the darts drawn and there should be a bit of interfacing where the button plackets will be. We've got the back, the color is here, cut twice, the ruffle strips here on the side that will frame the color. We've got two other little strips for the color ties, the sleeves, the cuffs are here with interfacing and you will also need 12 buttons. Okay, we're gonna start with the color. So the first thing you do is you take the ruffle strips and you fold them in half, wrong sides together, and you press down. Fold in half and mark the center. Now we're going to fold right sides together and we're going to sew the ends. And after it's done, you turn back the fabric so that the seam allowances are hidden and you press down. Let's gather the two strips. Now take one of the color panels. Identify the center and place one gathered strip on the color, right sides together. And you pin while leaving the seam allowances on each side free. And now you sew the two parts together in the seam allowance. Once the first gathered strip is sewed, pin and sew the other strip along the opposite edge in the seam allowance again. The neckties now. So you've got two strips that are 20 centimeters long. Fold them right sides together and sew. Then trim the seam allowances and turn upside down using whatever tools you've got and press down. Once they're done, you will pin them at the center of the color in the middle and you sew them to the color. It's better to do it in the seam allowance here again. So we're gonna add the other side of the color. Uh, that is the one that'll be against the skin. We're sewing along the upper long edge and the seam goes down on each side. And you have to be careful not to sew the ruffles with. Trim the seam allowance and turn upside down. I like to start this sewing project by sewing the color just because you can see the result right away and uh, just making the color and seeing the result feels already rewarding. Okay, moving on to the front. So take the front and sew the bust darts. Here's the result. As you can see, I press them down. Assemble the front and the back at shoulder seam. I sewed and I finished the edges too with my overlocker. Let us sew the color. I'm gonna pin the color to the neckline following the notches, right sides together. You want to pin the external side of the color, the one that bears ruffles on both its edges, and then I'm going to sew along the edge. And when arriving at the tip of the color, I will continue the seam and have it stop exactly at the tip of the color. I hope you can see well. I don't find it so easy to explain, so I'm not gonna speed up the footage. I started my seam in the middle and I sewed until one end and then I took care of the other one. Don't hesitate to turn the needle manually and stick it first exactly where you want the seam to end. Mm -hmm. 
end this is what it looks like now i am taking my scissors and where the color ends at the front i'll make a one centimeter deep cut in the fabric i'm gonna fold the seam allowances in the inner part of the color and I'll have it just barely cover the seam that I did earlier when I sewed the color to the neckline. Remember that you can always take a vanishing ink pen and trace your seam allowance. And once it's pinned, you can go ahead and top stitch the color. I top stitch along the upper edge as well so the color holds itself straight better. If you go back to the right version, you can see that I didn't do it and because of it, it slouches a bit. Let's move on to the front button plaquette. I had forgotten to add interfacing, so I am adding it now. I follow the lines that I drew before starting the project and I leave the seam allowances free. I fold the fabric a first time and I press down. And again, a second time, I noticed that we're on the wrong side of the fabric. So we've got the inside of the shirt before us. Now I reverse the fold that I just did and I pin, and I'm going to be sewing just this bit, one centimeter from the edge. Then I trim the seam allowance in the corner and I turn the fabric upside down. Here I've pinned the button plaquette in place and I sew. All right, let's move on to the sleeves. I've cut the slit, as you can see, and now I'm gonna add a little strip of fabric, which is bias, basically. I'm showing you what I'm doing, but I won't be explaining in details uh, how to sew this slit because there are videos that are explaining it better than I can with better close-ups. I'm gonna link to the tutorial that I used to learn how to do this part. And it's pretty cool because I followed it in French, but it's also in English. You Quebecois people be blessed. I don't find it easy to be honest. To me, one of the difficulties lies in not losing your orientation between the right and the wrong sides of the fabric and which arm is gonna end up being the right or the left one. If you don't feel like going through this part for whatever reason, there are easier ways of ending shirt sleeves. You could, for instance, add elastics and do them like this or like this. And if you do the sleeves like this, don't forget that you'll have to lengthen the sleeves to compensate for the missing cuff length. All right, now that I've done the slits, I gather the sleeve caps between the notches indicated. Once you've checked everything, you can go ahead and sew the sleeves. And I finish the edges with my overlocker. Now I will sew the sleeves and the sides of the shirt and finish the edges with my overlocker. Let's move on to the cuffs. I'm going to refer you to the same slit and cuff tutorial that I mentioned earlier. I'm going to gather my sleeve ends. As you can see, I've drawn the position of the button and the button holes on my cuffs. I did them before, but I would suggest you just draw little dots indicating the positions of the buttons and the button holes. And only at the end, when your cuffs are fully sewed, you can take a ruler and draw the button holes because you can easily get confused. The buttonholes should be on the side of the cuff that's wrapping your wrist outwards. If that makes no sense to you, I can't blame you. Um, just take your shirt that you have and have a look at the cuffs and on which side what is located and everything. Then I turn the fabric upside down. I fold in the seam allowances, I pin. And I top stitch. If you look at your shirt, the one that you've got at home already, you'll probably notice that the top stitching goes all around the cuff. I tried to sew this top stitching, but my seam wasn't straight, so I removed it. I don't think that I always have to make a perfect seam, but at the neck it's important to be careful because it's around your face, which is what people tend to look at in other people. <laughs> Not always. Guilty. <laughs> and then hands are probably the part of your body that you see the most. 
So you might not want, you know, every single time you look at your hands to notice the same crooked seam over and over again. Now let's finish the hem edge. I'm tucking the threads back in the seam so it doesn't unravel. I fold twice and I press down and now I sew the hem close to the edge. And this is what you get. Finally, I'll let you see the buttons and buttonholes and this is what it should look like. Let's have a look at the whole thing. I have to say that doing all the gathering takes time. The color and the cuffs require some minutia. It was my first time doing a shirt and I had to watch a couple of tutorials. It made me learn quite a few things about sewing, so that's very good. It's not easy, but I think it's worth the effort. If you have a doubt on the color, just take a nice crisp white and you'll feel like a thousand bucks. Classy, feminine, playful, just a dad extravagant. If you make it, don't forget the hashtag on Instagram and I'll see you there hopefully. Meanwhile, you take care.